Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Maisha Kazini. We are back in conversation with Bodekai Ogada about the different things that have been happening in Kenya over the last uh, month or so. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be here again. To comment on the way this pandemic is being handled and the way Kenyans are suffering. I, I, th I think fr from the very beginning, it's, I think the, the, the worst problem facing Kenya is the handling of the pandemic, even though the effects, the, the health effects are, are pretty bad as well. But it's exposed mm -hmm. a lot of schisms in our society, Every, everything from the provision of, of uh, medical care only to the wealthy. Mm -hmm. um, a paltry one million doses came into this country and we have already officially prioritized diplomats who actually have arrangements that have been made from their own countries so it's 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 really exposed the ambivalence of our our government towards our people even though we know we have vulnerable groups these elderly those working in hospitals um th those those handling those handling children and large groups of people to prioritize diplomats it's it's absurd but it's it's just a symbol of the absurdity that runs through this country in many facets it's like there's no sense of care for regular kenyans it's like we've been left to our own devices yes i mean i totally feel that that way i i'm not under no illusion we are totally mm -hmm. on our own here i mean mm -hmm. personally i use the sanitizer i wear my mask in in public places i maintain hygiene washing my hands all the time try and do exercise eat well and all that because i know i cannot afford to get ill in this country and that's not that's that's not just financially that's socially and and uh, and in terms of lack of lack of structures to support me the cost will be too high financially socially and 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 possibly to my family as well so we are, we are on our own. Let's make no illusion about that. Even mm. now, even now, the Ministry of Health is promoting the private sector to come into the vaccination oh, yeah. thing rather than serving the taxpayers who pay their salary. The same people who who uh, Cyrus Oguna talks down to, telling us not to complain. Yeah, support a government that doesn't care anything about us. In fact, by the way, at some point, you know how people, the, the West is saying, at you, how come Africa is not getting sick? I think yeah. it's because Africans know they are on their own, so they take more precautions. They are not the type to just I, I, like this I think say, so. we don't want to wear masks, it's an abuse of our rights. I'm not saying we are faithful, yeah. but there's a consciousness among Africans that, you know, if things go badly, we are on our own. Yeah, yes, and and I've I've seen it even even just fruit vendors by the roadside. Mm. He sacrificed or she sacrificed the small profits they have. They have a jerry can of water there and some hand soap. Mm. Every little kid in I live in a rural area, so every little kid going to school has either homemade mask or whatever, but they have some facial protection. And this is from knowledge. These were kids that we were told would be provided with masks. You remember when, mm. when the CS was inspecting River Techs making masks? By the way, I don't, I don't masks go if they were ever made. But people are realizing we are on our own. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to take care of each other. Mm. So don't, we can't, if you expect anything here from the government, you, you'll be lost. Then another big story that has happened in these strange times of ours is the story of uh, uh, Ahmed Kalebi's exit from, from Lancet. Hey, we have been disturbed. I've been so disturbed by that story. Hey. That, 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 that thing is a snapshot of Maisha Kazini. I know. Whew. Maybe after all, after all this comes down, you need, to, you need to get to have a conversation with him because it's yes. a snapshot of someone someone who who gave his all and i think i think he's unusual in that he's someone who got to where he was through work people in mm. kenya these days don't achieve oh, yes. very few people achieve seniority through work through what is done what is achieved the effort is put in the ideas he's put in mm. and then 
I think I think uh, his exit was being treated like it's an exit of someone who was employed in an e existing big company and didn't contribute anything to building it. Mm. I've never seen or known any other face of Lancet other than him. I mean, like this article I saw yesterday, they were saying that he had that idea when he was in government. And then the, those people gave him red tape until he couldn't implement it. Aki, what is yeah. that? What is it's, that? It's, 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 it's so typical. And, and, you know, and you know, in Kenya, there are two types of red tape. There's mm. a red tape that, that you're given because of regulations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's the red tape that you're given that is aimed at, is basically telling you no. Mm. There's, there, there's a level of red tape you cannot negotiate you will throw up your hands and walk away. And, and I think that's the sort of red tape that is put in your way when you come into any place in Kenya government with an idea, the first thing people ask is, who is he? Mm. And you know, who is he in Kenya does not mean, the answer to that question is not, he's Mordecai Ogada. The answer to that question, he's Mordecai Ogada, son of so-and-so, husband of so-and-so, went to from this so -and -so, area, from so-and-so's constituency and is mm. close to him. And so tribal leader. So that that's the answer. And 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 I think I think in that context, despite all his abilities and achievement, Kalebi was nobody. And then you know he must have been young. So yes, of course. Assuming yeah, even now he was he's about just in... twenty something, mid twenties, yeah. early thirties. Yeah. He's there saying, yeah. "Let's do a national." How dare you? How dare you think of national? Who are you? I can I I can just see those senior civil servants, the one who hang coats on chairs. They are saying, <laughs> <laughs> you know that that stone. <laughs> hmm? ah. You know that that to do And Let especially me. because he was mm -hmm. he was he was providing an idea that they could not understand and they they could not see how they fit in. And that's what I wanted to talk about ideas. You know, the way this Mwalimu did has been telling people ideas are useless, become a plumber, and then in Majengo, go and yeah. work there. Yeah. But these, these uh, foreigners, they realize this is a multi-million shilling idea and they put in the yeah. millions. How is it yes. that that doesn't happen from Kenyans? And and actually, Kenya 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 is is a, a hotbed, if I can say, of ideas. That's yeah. why students in the West are getting their papers written by some kids here. Mm -hmm. This is where the ideas are. That's why all these these e-business startups are coming. Foreigners are hiding their faces behind African words to name their e-businesses and starting up here and using ideas from young people here to grow into big business. They, why didn't they do that in their home countries? Because Kenya is where ideas are. So we, this country is actually, especially our youth are hotbeds of ideas. You remember when COVID broke out, the kids around with ideas, they were creating ventilators, I remember. Oh yeah, in fact, we should add they that story. Because yeah, those they, ventilators have not yet been approved, quote unquote. Yes, the, the, there was the debacle of the guy who, who made the hospital beds because someone had created a story that, oh, there's not enough ICU beds. There's a guy who fabricated these ICU type hospital beds, but unfortunately it went where? nowhere because there's no money to be made by procuring something from Ruiru. You have to procure from abroad. I think it was in Ruiru. It came to nothing. So we are full of ideas here. We are full of ideas. But and, and I think I think nothing scares nothing scares our government more than ideas. Mm. So you'd be so happy if that guy, instead of making a fabricating a hospital bed, why didn't he go and just fashion water pipes and be a plumber? Then it wouldn't be a problem. But he has to come up and deny he's bringing us hospital beds. How dare Why could he the imagine he can how, be that how dare he? How dare he? Why didn't this other guy just create something like a wheelbarrow? Why is he making a ventilator? Then he's coming that he wants to sell us ventilator. How dare he? And we want to import ventilators. 
We have cannibals this idea, in this government, honestly. Yes, it it is, it is it is a very it's an avaricious, cruel mm. monster, really. Yes. It's 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 frightening, and that's why I often say that as bad as things are with COVID, people always ask me when I when I talk about the COVID pandemic, mm. people I never betray fear, and people are aren't afraid. Yes, I'm afraid of it. But the Kenya government scares me so much more than COVID. This they cruelty. Will destroy, yes. This cruelty COVID scares cruel. me so much more than COVID. Yeah. I see young people being destroyed, having no hope, sitting on the street corner, and that scares me far more than COVID. And, and let's talk about the, the response to the questions we are raising about the way Kalebi was treated. People are saying, yeah. no, it's okay, he'll get the money and start something else. What is wrong with that idea? Um, the, we've become so crass in that we, can, we, we actually attempt to quantify humanity and the human spirit in terms of, in monetary terms. Mm -hmm. And I remember we had some time we were talking some time back and I reminded you of a headline in one of our local dailies when the late Wangari Mathai won the Nobel Prize. The headline was Mathai wins 110 million shilling prize. The headline did not include the word Nobel Peace Prize, the words Nobel Peace Prize. Mm. So uh, as the importance of that prize was not the global recognition, it was the money. And even with, with Kalebi, oh, he'll get paid one billion point something, one point something billion. Oh, that's, 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 that's the best thing about it. In fact, he should just go. He should just go and be happy. What about the human condition? What about the human spirit? The self-belief, they maybe stayed up nights mm. up to 2 a.m. or whatever, thinking of how to do this, selling, selling these ideas to skeptical people who finally believed it and invested in it and accepted them. That, that cannot be quantified in terms, of, in terms of money. That's why if you look at, in Kenya, we've gotten to a point now that we do not have any awards in Kenya worth talking about. Be it for best scientists, be it for best writer, be it for best uh, engineer and all that. Why don't we have? Because we don't give a crap about ideas. We want to import things and procure them and get kickbacks. Those with ideas are just a nuisance. That's the crass level to which this country has, has, uh, has regressed. And even those with the qualifications, the academic qualifications have been reduced to beggars in this, in this horse trading, this horse trading uh, uh, society that we've become because they don't want to contribute ideas. Some because they are too lazy, some because they're disillusioned and some because they're lo looking for shortcuts. And then, you know, the other problem is what it does to the next generation. It means that the next mm -hmm. Kenyans who want to do something, they have to start from scratch. Instead of yes. building on the legacy, maybe even being mentored by him, now they start from scratch. Yeah, yes, uh, you, you like re reinvent the wheel every yeah. time every time and and i think even um us as academics i think we also present a really crass picture to how many of us actually have students who aspire to be like us and not just to finish our class and get the hell out and i i, I remember one professor i had who i i, I sort of aspired to be I was nowhere, not going to be anything as good a statistician as he was, but I aspired to have the grasp of my subject the way he the had way a he grasp did. of statistics. Mm. Yeah, he, he, he could speak it anytime. He could I, I imagine you could wake him up at 2.30 a.m. and ask him a stats question and he'd just give you the answer and go back to sleep. I aspired to be like that with my chosen subject. But students don't aspire to be like the academics they see these days. Like These my are favorite academics lecturer, who are following, yeah. Yeah, my favorite lecture in K, lecturer in KU was the, like, the one of the least liked because she was so she was so perceptive and she would comment on what is happening in reality and people would just be like, oh no, she's so boring. Why is she mm -hmm. on what? Where are the notes? 
Yeah. Yeah. Where are the notes? Yeah. So, the, and then the, the other problem was, at least for us in the in the humanities, is that the people who we aspired to like were exiled. Yes. And that was a very strong message. I don't want to have to go into exile. So, so let, let me try and keep my head down. I impose my own glass ceiling and do as well as I can below that ceiling, but don't aspire mm. to, 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 go, to go up any further. Because again, these good lecturers kept getting taken away from us. Some of them, not, not necessarily by government, but some by the university. Yes. They are appointed to, mm. like this, this favorite of mine was appointed to head the AIDS control office yeah, at KU. To distribute with condoms. His, his with, with, <laughs> yes, to distribute condoms with his, with his, with his expertise in biostatistics. And I, I was appalled, but, but um, yeah, it's, it's all aspiring. He was being removed from the place where he was working and being put in a place where he was uh, just, just uh, serving someone else's agenda. So, so basically the way the system is structured, it's structured to crush creativity and work of yes. ordinary Kenyans. You never develop it, you're in your expertise, but even worse, you never mentor the next generation. The next people yes, come, they fact, have to start yeah. again. Yes, in fact, we, we are we are um, we are we are we are creating that thing which which I own. There was this Soviet, uh, this Russian word, apparatchik. Mm. That's what we are trying to create. You are you are an operative. You are a cog. You are not supposed to drive or create anything. You are supposed to perform for X number of years. When you are finished, you throw you in the dustbin. And the only thing you can hope to is to be performing on a big stage but still performing, not creating. It's like the polishing shoes we are talking about. Mm. We are being taught to polish shoes. So the luckiest, the best, will end up polishing very important people's shoes. The, the worst, will end up polishing dusty shoes in the local village. But we'll all be polishing shoes. And it's that sad that we are now begging. We are now begging to polish shoes. And this, this, this can be seen even in the thing we talked about, the vaccine. Mm. People give us the vaccine, then we want to give it back to their people. Huh? We import this thing from, I'm not sure where it came from. I assume it came from England. Then we want to vaccinate English diplomats here. With, with their vaccine. With the same thing they, are brought, they brought for us. A poultry, a poultry one million, which is not enough for even high-risk groups in Kenya. That is shoe polishing. Kalebi would have gone off with just getting paid in terms of his salary yeah. and not in terms of the work that he did for the company. Yeah. So you, you were saying yeah. something about the way that operation is usually yeah. done to people. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the intellectual input you put into something, it's, it's invaluable mm. because it, it, can only happen, it can only happen once. When you create something, it's mm. it's like it's like the, the for example the guy who created the Mpesa. Other people have tried. Somehow it's not it's not happened again. That's been done. The guy who created yes. Microsoft Windows. It's not been. It can't be done. It's you can't create it again. So mm. that is invaluable. And these these guys these guys are trying to treat him like they employed him and now they're yes. just giving him severance pay. They are not they are not treating him as a creative because. And again, that shows our society does not even understand what it means to be creative. We think a creative is only someone who can draw a mural, although that's a creative, but we think that's the only creative. A good scientist has to be a creative because you have to find solutions to existing problems that no one's found before. And that, that, that kind of thing, as, as engineers, doctors need creative ways of controlling illnesses, especially in resource limited places like here. So if this guy came up with this idea we cannot treat him as if he's somebody, we had this idea and we employed him to do it. He's not a shoe polisher. He came and designed a shoe. And it has fit and it's smart. So we cannot dismiss him the way we dismiss someone who might have been polishing an existing shoe. They are, they are treating him like, oh, you are just a CEO. You are a manager. Yeah. 
that was your job so see you as in it could have been someone else it could have been Create someone else Lancet. no and it's and, him. and just talk about what you were saying about the, the what you call it the in, the infusion of capital because this obsession we have with money yes. we think yes. that the the infusion of money is is uh, everything is everything yeah. kumbe it's a it's, strategy yeah, that, yeah that's that's the thing with, with the, he had this 20% shareholding mm. in 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 lancet then these these the other shareholders brought in some external investor who we don't know who suddenly gave some in huge injection of cash that doubled the share capital and effectively reduced kalebi's by half so his 20% became 10% just at a pop like that without selling any shares and that's lethal if you think about it if they brought four times it would have reduced his sharing to 5% or 10 times oh, and reduced two. it to 2%. Yes. And we tell, and we could kick him out tell him you are nobody talk up. And these injections of capital capital is something we have to be very careful because yeah, of, because in Kenya so much of it is just on paper. They say we have brought did someone see it brought? It can be brought and once you are kicked out it's taken out again. But your shareholding remains at 10. It's just that now we have succeeded in kicking you out and we are back to where we were. There was a wave of uh, telling young people, go to the hubs, do your invention, yeah. some venture capitalists yeah. will come and put in the money. But mm -hmm. it was actually a way of disempowering people from the control of their ideas. Yes, yes. The, the, the money is brought in not, not to build you, but to disenfranchise you, to kick you out. And, and, and the worst thing is that in Kenya, this is being normalized that, oh, you invented this. Then so-and-so brought that. Ah, chukua pesu ende. And you know, you know, there's something people say that we belittle ideas by saying, you'll come up with another one. Mm. Your brain is not like soap. It doesn't wear out. No, ideas, ideas are so precious. They don't just come. I mean, I mean so, some of... Um, some of the ideas I've had, even in science and all that, I don't know how they came to me. If you ask me to come up with another one similar, I just couldn't do you it. Can't. You can't. They're just embedded in the moment. There's a moment in that a happens, moment, yeah. something is happening yeah. around you and the idea comes. You can't, yeah. you can't uh, repeat yeah. that. Yeah, even if you've, if you've, done, if you've done writing, you, you realize there are days you're so busy, but ideas are just flowing and you, 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 you've got your laptop even on the kitchen counter. Then there's a day you even decide to take a retreat to somewhere like Samburu in a lodge. I want to spend it a week writing. Zero. Mm. Zero. It's, yeah, they're in the moment. They're in the moment. And, and, and people should not think, Ahmed Kalebi did not have a moment. He had an idea and he worked his hands to the bone to make it work and he sold it and people bought it. So his contribution cannot, cannot be belittled in that manner. But young people in Kenya now are being, we are being taught that that is, that is normal. Sell your thing and go away. Mm. And, and the way we are being told, yeah, the, and then we are told this funny thing called the investing. We, piracy is just referred to as investing. Those are not investors. Those are pirates. They've come and robbed you. It's just that they didn't use a panga or a gun. But they've come and robbed you of your lifeblood idea. It, it's, it's part of that logic of disruption. You, you know, you yeah. see something good happening. You just bust it. And mm -hmm. then people scatter. And then now when they come back to start telling them, see, you were here before. Repeat. You can't. So yeah, much, yeah. So what has flown flowed under the bridge? Yes, it's 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 gone. The moment in time, it might not it might not be relevant anymore. It's mm. it's it's, it's almost like the, the the these Kenyan companies who you see that are trying to build cars now. Mm. The car was invented nineteen or whatever, and it's been developed to where we are now. Why should you start trying to build Again. a car now? Again. Why? Why are you doing that? <laughs> it's because of, you know, the colonial narrative of invention. So and so is great yeah. because they invented. So they think that the greatness is in the invention. Yeah. 
And they don't no. realize even those inventors were building on other knowledge. They, they are building on other knowledge. The idea on their own. Yeah, and it was that place and time. Time. Yeah. We now need to we need, now need to find do something better using the car they invented, or using the the accessories, the batteries, the lights, whatever they, they invented. We need to do something better than that, and we are capable of doing that. But we keep yeah, trying to be turned from creative into technician, into apparatchik, sort of just operatives. Yeah. So this is really about the way we think of ideas, it has been so distorted. And you'd think the people of yeah. ideas in the academy would do, a, but here we have Professor Herman Manyora no. telling us yeah. we don't need election. I... Yes. Yes, I mean, I mean, it's sometimes I, I, I think I, I might start, a, I, 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 might, I, might, I might need to start just doing more things to calm myself down to deal with the sheer embarrassment yes. that people claiming to be academics are, are, are visiting upon all of us. And you because had if, mentioned if, it, that the, the yeah. idea was already there. It had yes. been floated. Yes. Yeah, you mentioned it yes. even in Maisha Kazini. Yes, because just casual observation of what I was, I obviously I was here in 2016 when we were a year away from elections 2017. Mm. And I see the level of preparation running up and down civic education, voter registration, um, election action plan being presented to parliament. And I don't see that now. So I was asking like, what, 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 what's going on as far as the election we are pre expecting next year? It doesn't look like we are gonna have one. And not to mention the lack of quorum in the commission, et cetera, or lack of a CEO. But, but I, I was waiting to see what's happened. Then Manora comes up with this. He's, it's 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 so easy to see through that it's really pathetic. But but yeah, he's he's now trying to test the water, float this thing out there, see what happens, um, reap the results, and um, hopefully, if it happens, get a, get a job to polish some big shoes. It's pathetic. And you know, Kenyans don't realize that this is how ideas work. They don't start with the the politician. They start by yeah, like, preparing yeah. the ground. Then they get mm -hmm. a professor to throw out the idea, wait yes. for people to make a lot of noise, so that mm -hmm. by the time now it becomes a policy, you've mm -hmm. already made all the noise and you feel, there's a, there's a despair you feel. You know, why yes. should I say this You'll again? You'll get exhausted. And yet I said it the other time. Yeah. But people don't realize that it's part of the plan. If mm. it was some villager out mm. there saying that we should not have election, people would say, Kwenda Uko, what do you know? We have are you? elections. Kenya is a democratic. He becomes their professor, and even and even even uh, even people are even advertising on that YouTube channel because they know it's it's going to get a lot of views and this kind of thing. And it's it's pathetic. It's it's truly pathetic. Um, academics academics could, should contribute to knowledge, but that's because the as we were saying the acad the academy is dead. So. Only, only the most committed academics still want to generate and share ideas with the public. Most of, most of the others are getting their papers and going to look for big shoes to polish. The people who should have been interrogating BBI are the secretaries taking notes while, 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 uh, while uh, semi-literate politicians are shouting. They're the ones taking minutes. And, and in fact, actually, the, the, that's the point of that title, Professor. It's, it's no yes. longer a, a recognition of your ideas. It's a, a, something to, to polish other yes. people's ideas yes. with. Yes, 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 exactly. exactly. It's like a cloth. It's like a cloth mm -hmm. to go and polish ideas. You are looking, you are looking for shoes to polish. As I, as I was telling you before, um, in, in my field in conservation, someone with secondary school education said that we, we we need to put contraceptives in lions because they are, they are they are eating too many gravy zebra and people with phds went to implement that idea there's no that self pride no 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 we've we've we, we've lost that and and the, the 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 death of the academy a lot of time when we talk of the death of academy people think we are talking about institutions it's it's not just institutions but it's the 
it's an intellectual death of of, of a society mm. because r- right now right now right now in Kenya people need to understand don't listen to someone because he's got a phd listen to him because he's saying something useful mm. and it's it's good even for the people who listen to us to know we are not we are not talking this stuff because we we are not saying anything about our titles we don't need to say that and they should not listen to us because of that they should listen to us because we are actually saying something that's useful and that they can see in their everyday lives hey and you know like bbi they've been throwing prof- his professor titles at yes at yes people. like yes. when uh, professor shihanya was talking with daisy amdani oh my god yes. <laughs> He was telling her this is not a marketplace bring your yes. your what did he say constitutional anthro- anthropology bring citations bring political philosophy but that's not what bbi is bbi is a political instrument so why f- yes. why flash his titles at and subjects and a good academic should welcome someone who questions so he can explain further he or she can explain mm. further what what they were trying to say but yeah that's that they talk about a market i mean as as we were saying in tra- in traditional african society even rural society like where i live markets are where people meet and yes, talk and yes. exchange ideas in fact politicians that's, that's where they go yes they go that's where politicians go the market yes because that that's where people hear and see new things people go mm. to the market and and they come back knowing something new having seen something new having bought something new so it's it's an exchange not of just goods and money it's of ideas at, as well the, or maybe he's not capable of intellectually defending what he's supporting so he defends it with papers and asking if, i don't know was daisy to bring citations to the studio or what what we do do with this idea he came with papers <laughs> he came with papers me yeah, i was just like oh lord this is not what we are supposed to be no it oh. it's very far from what we are supposed to be i think it will teach kenya a valuable lesson that 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 uh, professors and academics can be as full of nonsense as uh, the rest of us are mm. and i wanted us to talk also about the contempt for people you know the way manyora yeah. was saying at one point he was calling the youth an army of unemployed yeah uh yeah. he w- he was saying it's people who are obsessed with elections uh mm-hmm. elections have preoccupied their brains if they have any i mean oh god the way he yeah. was talking yes yes i mean it's it's abs- as you say it's absolute contempt and and um and this is like the, trying to use the look, looking for the terms in imperial russia like the serfs you are serfs we know what's best for you mm. you don't need to be going to the poles after all after all you people don't even know what you want we know what you want yes get into your tribal leader's basket and follow his mm. lead that that sort of thing it's ultimate contempt and he, he's talking of brains if they if the if they have any the thing is elections in a, in our chosen system of government are part of the national structure mm. they're not something we desire or can wish away or need to choose whether to have they're part of who we are like our flag like, like our borders like 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 our our law, all the rest of our laws we can't decide that this year now the, the population has gone too much we should let make murder legal so that we can reduce some no we can't do that our law it's against our law we can't do that but but um, the, the thing is the thing is i hope kenyans now know that a lot of people are just being used to advance to advance ideas that really have no place and cannot be advanced in a in a just fair and reasonable manner and just using the title professor some some village, some guy in the village might be horrified by what manyora said but say oh my god he's a professor how do mm. i even ask him mm. how do i even ask him no no it's it's a, it's it's really sad and i think i think the intellectual decline the easiest way for a country to be sort of conquered is first destroy the academy the rest won't stand for itself it's 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 a really sad thing you don't need guns and stuff just just to make make everyone an apparatchik 
um, the, one is just an apparatchik with the title professor, the other is apparatchik with title Mr. or Miss or whatever. And, and we need to be so careful about the way academics are mesmerizing Kenyans. They are just bringing titles and positions yeah. and pushing ideas. Yeah. And they're doing it in a way that is saying, don't you dare challenge me. Yeah. Who yeah. are you? Don't, don't, I'm a professor. Yeah. And that's why people are falsifying PhD studies now. They are mm. falsifying master's thesis mm. because they want that prefix. They want that prefix that puts me above question. And I think, I think it's a very sad place for the country to be in now. And um, as you were saying the, uh, the other time that the younger generation are really our best hope here. Because I, re I recently spoke to uh, some young lady about various things in conservation and my stand on various things. And she instantly started questioning me. But why do you think? But why do you think this? And I was really impressed by that, because it gave me the. She didn't believe me just out of hand, but it also gave me the opportunity to explain to her father why I I have the various hold the various positions I hold. And she she wasn't anybody in conservation. In fact, she's a radio presenter. Uh, but I was I was very impressed by that. And and um, sadly, the vast. The vast, uh, the vast majority of Kenyans just don't believe we should question somebody with with uh, with a DR in front of their or professor, mm. even though they might be a professor of one thing, and in a position handling something totally different. Mm. Yeah. So, what in principle? Why should we have elections? Because basically, the way. Uh, Manora talked about the elections. It's like it's it's a past time. It's a time for Kenyans mm -hmm. to just uh, be frivolous. Why, in mm. principle, should we not accept the idea that elections should be postponed? I think, I think, the the, the main principle is that there are time to examine our leaders. We may not mm. change them. Mm. Some obviously will lose their seats. Some won't. But it's time to examine their leaders. The, you, if you see that the things we hold them to account on now are the lies they told us at the last election. Mm. If we didn't have that election, they wouldn't have told us those lies and we wouldn't be holding them to account on anything. So it's, it's a time to examine our leaders and examine ourselves as people as well and, and remove that comfort that they've enjoyed. It's necessary. It's part of the human condition. If, if we didn't hold elections, why on earth would anyone be accountable? Mm. You'd be crazy to be accountable for anything. So it's, it's, it's completely part of our, our fabric as a nation. And also it's, it's, it's something of a catharsis. And if I give an example of kids in boarding schools, many of which are very cruel and violent places, mm. Mm. that's at an age where energy is high, testosterone, is high and all that violence is a very small step away at any time if they only handle that and my experience that's my personal experience i only handle that because i focus in two weeks school is closing and we're gonna go home mm. if two weeks to closing day you told them you guys are not closing those kids would burn the school because, because there's suddenly, no there's no escape there's, there's no light at the end of the yes yes there's no light at the end of the tunnel mm. you create you create darkness you create darkness by 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 not having transition or or examinations of of leadership so you create darkness and and that is not something that's not something that um that 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 kenya should contemplate i'm i'm i it's it's not it's it's it doesn't bear thinking about so I think if so, if in we fact, were actually, it would increase the violence rather than prevent it. Oh yes, oh yes, it would. It it would it would spark it off. The number of people who are completely disillusioned with the MCA, the MP, whoever it, the leaders are, are just saying, I'm "Sick of this guy." But wait, election is coming next year. I'm casting my vote against him, or I'm going to. I'm going to run for office against him. We have to change this place. Then suddenly someone tells you, no, 
That's not going to happen. What means does that leave you with? Especially with, especially for those for those in this society who who are who are capable of extrajudicial, who are capable of extra extrajudicial ways of achieving their aims. It it will it that's what will cause the violence, and I refuse to believe that Manora doesn't understand this. But I think also we don't hold professors accountable. There's oh, yes. something yeah. wrong with the state. I've noticed that. People are never held personally responsible for the things they say and the things they do. Even KICD yes. have been saying, all those yeah. guys who wrote that curriculum and imposed it on us yeah. need to be held personally yeah. accountable. They need to go down in history with their names. Dr. Yes. So-and-so put this. Professor So-and-so yes. said this. Yes. So that yes. They, they are aware they'll be held personally responsible for what they say. But right now, People say, no, don't listen to the person, listen to the idea. But we are not even being allowed to challenge yes. that idea. Y yes, e ex exactly. And, and we, we hide behind, especially when we create structures like these committees, these ad hoc committees. Mm -hmm. We have, like, what remains on record is the chair said this. No, it should oh, be. Yes. The Mr. chair, so Dr. So Mordecai Ogada, said this. Yeah. So one day, if Mordecai Ogada says something different, say, ah, you know, you are the one who said in 2021, you said we should do this and this and that. Mm. Because that, that, that's, that's how people become, become responsible for what they do. And, and, uh, and I see it even, it's a problem even in our legislature. This thing that, that the eyes have it and the nays and all that. In, in the US people, I noticed that there's such meticulous records. People get, so and so X in 1975 he voted against this and now he's telling us he supports it. Those mm. records are there and they're pub but here these, we have this acclamation and shouting back and forth and now things like the way like the way the BBI thing has become it's become like a cult. Like you are you are you are you are either singing about it or you are an enemy. No one wants to question anything. Just yesterday parliament it suddenly occurred mm -hmm. to our house uh, general in our national assembly that their role in this thing was just as a rubber stamp then they're saying they oh we can't be know. just a rubber ah. stamp but but even i knew from the beginning that they were rubber stamp what is wrong with these people what is wrong with these people and and they, they, the the committee is even saying they want to second they want to second a, a lawyer from outside the house to, to give some advice. You know how many lawyers there are in that committee? <laughs> Our Senate, I think, is 60% lawyers. So what is this legal expertise? Hmm? Yeah, that the one from outside the house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they want a consultancy of BBI. Yes. And that and I know I know the problem is because they have stupidly told their party lines. And they, as lawyers, can see there's something wrong. So they want someone who is not an MP and cannot be whipped to come uh, and point out the wrongs. Because oh. they are too much of it's, cowards to say this is wrong. Yeah, they don't they, want yes, it to they be too, pointed to yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's like it's like if some of these professors in KIC suddenly realize that that uh, that. Uh, um, CBC is the nonsense it is. They'll say, no, let's 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 um, get Wadi and Joya here as a consultant. She can advise us on the way forward here. <laughs> because none of them wants to say, hey, you guys, this thing, there's a problem. You see, this cowardice that, that afflicts this country, the cowardice that afflicts this country, it's 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 a tragedy. And that's why Kenyans need to. Me, this story of Atino, listen to the idea, not the person. Don't personalize. I think people need to be held accountable for their ideas and the decisions yes. that they make. Yes. Yes, With exactly. The, name. And the, the, thing, the things they say, the things they write. I don't, uh, and that's, 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 uh, that's uh, in the electronic age, it's very important to understand. I mean, I'm, th uh, there's nothing I write on social media that I couldn't say out in the street. Mm. so i don't yeah that, that's that's my simple that's my simple rule if i can't say it out on the street i don't i won't write it on you won't see it written anywhere by me 
And that, and that's the thing, because I know I want to be accountable for that idea. And if you stop me and ask me about it, I will tell you what it's about. But yeah, people are wanting to hide. The committee decided. Mm. Uh, the House of Parliament decided. The Senate decided. The County Assembly decided. Ah, when is a person going to decide on anything? When is, when is someone going to decide as a person? And I think I think that's even one of the one of the 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 things that um, that led to a, a lot of the, the ambivalence that Kenya has with with the leaders even of neighboring countries. Mm. We see leadership and it scares us like oh my god, that's exactly what we should be doing, and we are not. Or or we could do that, but we haven't. We could say that, but we haven't, because we are cowards. Yeah. If people can't talk in parliament, one wonders where 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 will, where will they talk? Yeah, where? Where will they talk in parliament? If, and if parliament and I was telling some talk. some people, I think it was two weeks ago. I was telling them there is a cynicism under this cowardice. People think, why should I talk? And yet, maybe what I say will not be implemented. It, it's a it, yeah. It's a kind of arrogance yeah. because you're saying whatever I say must happen. So if it doesn't happen, mm. then I shouldn't say it. What kind of society thinks like that? Yeah. 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 You, 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 yeah, you, you don't, you don't share an idea because, because yeah, you, you think it's, it's not, it's not going to be grabbed and taken up by the Kenya government or something. Mm. Mm. That, that, that's, I think that's, that's sort of an excuse it's important to say things because there are some people who obviously who are doing th wrong things deliberately. Mm. But there are some people who are doing things the wrong way because there's an angle they haven't seen. Yes. We don't know who will, who will hear something useful from what we say. Mm. But you have something useful to say, something good, and it's something honest, an honest opinion, you give it. And you give it in a clear manner it might help somebody somewhere, even just in handling some domestic issue in his home. So that's, that's, uh, that's generosity and it's a form of mm. generosity mm. and it's a, it's a form of self-belief. So I think, I think we are stuck with people who are, they don't have self-belief, but they want to hide their cowardice behind some sort of arrogance. After all, it doesn't matter why bother you know when I we had a lot of conversations with people about VBI, VBI. everybody would answer it will pass it will succeed it's now it's to avoid responsibility for saying we yes, don't yes, want it. yes yes you don't want responsibility no 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 you don't trust responsibility of talking about you don't trust responsibility of thinking about what's going to happen to your kids in the future you don't yes. want that responsibility yeah you want to, you want to just sing and join the reggae bandwagon now and then, and enjoy and enjoy the the big rallies at which they are spreading covid and all that <laughs> and you know i don't know why i always get a miss people don't fear history because i say a hundred years from now, somebody asked in 2021 what was happening. What did Wandia yeah. say? Yes. People are not yes. haunted by that. Yes. Or haunted by their kids yes. saying, how did this person you were there? Yeah. The kids are a very good judge with, mm -hmm. without even asking them. Will will my will my son be, be proud when somebody says, Oh, that was your dad? Mm. Was, he had some really good ideas. Or, or he's the one I learned this thing from him, and that, because I know personal experience. Again, my, my dad passed on many decades ago, but there are places I've gone and met people who knew him, and they tell me, "Oh my God, I remember him. He said this and this, or did this and that." And I think that's that's really important to take responsibility, even just for the next generation. The nonsense you do will will it will affect your kids. You do something wrong, when you're gone, your kids will pay for it. You do something right, when you're gone, your kids will, will gain from it. That's just how society works. But people think, people can't think beyond two years from now. I, I don't, 
I don't I, understand I it. it. I th- I think we, we it's we are so afraid. I we are afraid to think. We know there are problems, but we just say, uh, no, let's not deal with that now. We think it's enough to put food in our stomachs and sleep and all that. It's we are not we are not just physiological beings. I think we we are psychological and cultural beings. But that actually now ties into what we've even been saying about work. The reason why there are yeah. these very terrible ideas circulating. That what matters is is only Pay. go to Tibet and and use a hammer and get paid is because yes. people there's a war against ideas against thinking. So yes. we are being told yes. there's no point of thinking. There's no point of being creative. Just get no. a hammer and go and make a table. Apparatchik, you you hammer that thing into place and all that. Mm. Because I I I I told you I I was telling you about this kid I was talking to who who said that they were being examined in school on polishing shoes, and and it's and kids kids are really struggling. And this is a rural area where some I said some kids they could not have find a spare shoe pair of shoes at home to to come with to school. So her mother kid had to borrow a pair of shoes, an extra pair of shoes. Meaning from... leather shoes, because it can't be rubber. Yes, rubbers. yes. No, no, no. It's leather shoes. So the kid is like learning how to polish shoes that so far he has never even worn that kind of shoe, those kind of shoes. You know, we do know there, there are a lot of kids in Kenya who actually start wearing leather shoes in Form 1. Mm. So these guys, are even... so now you're teaching him how to polish shoes so that I don't he, 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 so, so that he can learn what he needs to do, how it is to do something for someone thoroughly or I don't know what it is. But it's absolutely bizarre and they're being examined on it. So, so no, we don't want them to think. We don't want them to think at all. We just want them to learn how to perform. I wanted us to talk about hey, why are professors talking like this about what I'm just the, the, just I mean, can't the, the it. hatred for the common people is the new cult in Kenya. Yes. And you see it in government. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see it at the highest levels of government. You see it even at these, what I de- derisively refer to as middle class. <laughs> yes. When you see, you see it, you see it. You see it, yeah, when they talk about the clothes they wear, the cars they buy, and what I took my car to the car wash, and this guy, this guy cracked the, the, the indicator light. And then you take a picture, make sure you 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 include the mark that shows what make of car it is, that kind of thing. Um you have this WhatsApp group, you know, there are clubs now, parents of ex school, it's like a club, you know. They have stickers, there's car stickers, parent of ex school, this kind of thing. So it percolates down. So a professor, the beggar professors that I was referring to, they need to demonstrate hatred for the common man to be considered for positions in government. Mm. A mm. professor does not want to be the, the, the agricultural, the agronomist who went to teach people in rural Nyeri how to grow good maize. Wants to be the agronomist who, te- who told farmers, you, are, you don't know how to, to grow good maize. You need to put more fertilizer and stop buying those cheap fertilizers. Look for money and buy expensive ones. And plant GMO maize. Stop planting that funny traditional maize. No, no. That's, what, that's, that's the one who gets a job in government. The one who, who went and showed the farmers how to use farmyard manure to produce their maize, how to intercrop with the, with the pumpkins or whatever. Ah, that one is, that one will not be, that, where will we procure things if you're telling people to plant pumpkin? We can't import pumpkin. <laughs> and, and you know, now that you say it, it's kind of linked to now this COVID thing of saying, let's give uh, vaccines to the diplomats first. Pre- precisely, precisely. The, the doctor who, the, the Ministry of Health official who would have said, um, what is our plan? Can we get some small cool boxes on pickups to go look for rural old shows in villages and vaccinate them? 
before we kwenda huko we need to start in gigiri where the diplomats are <laughs> We are supposed to start at Runda. Shows. <laughs> start in Runda. Hmm? Start in Runda. You are, you are going to you are, you are going to Kabondo to go and vaccinate some old women there. Hmm? <laughs> that that official would have been dismissed summarily. The quick, quick, quick. Yeah, we need to vaccinate them while while, while we are there. Maybe in that thirty seconds. You are vaccinating a diplomat. You can ask him to give you some foreign grant or something. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, How did it's, this happen, Kai? It's 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 subservience at a level that's actually difficult to fathom. Yes, I mean even like it's difficult to fathom. Like the COVID, it was a diplomat who was saying, "I don't understand why the Kenya government wants to give us." Vaccine. Yeah. Ah. Our governments have made arrangements for us. Is it that there's no self awareness? What is the problem? It's some serious cognitive oh, dissonance. Which, which... Serious. And as I was saying, they will end up only vaccinating the members of the Kenyan mission to UNEP. <laughs> I mean. Oh. This it's it, it's ethically it looks bad. Even for the diplomat, it looks bad. In fact, that's why they are talking if like the, that because in their home countries, yeah, they'll be being asked, "What do you mean you are getting vaccines for Kenyans and Kenyans are not vaccinated?" They'll be asked. Yeah, he'll be asked, "What what are you doing? You should be the one arranging ordering doses for for you for yourself in the embassy and your staff from home the home country." You, you have, we cannot donate vaccines to Kenya, then you are the one taking your yeah. arm there to be jabbed. Eh? <laughs> that official policy oh. can be so intellectually vacuous is, 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 is bizarre in the extreme, really. I don't And the PS said we, we, have a we, have, we have a responsibility. <laughs> Kenyans should understand. wear masks, sanitize, keep your hygiene. We are on our own. Oh. And maybe yeah, I hadn't mentioned own. this. <laughs> Gosh. Maybe we can talk about the now we can thing while we are at it. Oh, Jesus. Yes. This yes. Is... <laughs> uh. the, and I think the more I thought about the Naomi Campbell thing, is, mm. And I realized that I should have expected it yes. because uh. because Kenya as a as a nation we are in an identity crisis completely. That's that's why that's why I I don't think anyone was malicious in in offering the the gig to Naomi Campbell. It's just that we don't know who we are. We don't know who we are. That's why of all the personalities we have here, we couldn't, we couldn't settle on any, any one of them or any three or any 10 of them. And then when they did that video, they put a Nigerian, a Nigerian uh, music soundtrack to it. So we, we just have yes. no identity. We have no identity. And, and, and the people, okay, we have an identity, but the people tasked with marketing this country have no idea what that identity is. And you remember me pointing out that it's only since COVID and after that furor that Magical Kenya has started putting out advertisements for Kenya that have black people in them. It's a very recent development. You remember when they're inviting uh, uh, investors, they're inviting, they're inviting uh, people for conference, conference and event tourism, all the ads just showed white people. And even, even, even now, the little money we have, they use it to sponsor the, the Kenya Open Golf Tournament. <laughs> how, I saw how, those. How, how, in a private member's club. So what is the reach per dollar or shilling spent, even as far as those in the advertising industry are concerned? 
if taxpayers' money can be spent on sponsoring a golf tournament, it's just, we just have, it's this cognitive dissonance. We, we, it's, it defies belief. It defies belief. But you know, actually, even though Kenya has put pressure on multiple Kenya to put Africans in their adverts, tourism is not for Africans in their mind. It's for rich white yes. people seeking a colonial experience. Yes, and Magical Kenya, Magical Kenya has actually has actually very strongly promoted the 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 colonial Happy Valley experience mm. as, as one of the key one of the key attracting things to Kenya, which is which is absolutely bizarre because it's not just the hedonism. There was re racism, there was cruelty, there was drug use, debauchery, and all that. So how that edifies any country is, 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 is beyond my understanding. But we still struggle. And I tell you, one, if you talk of popular sports in Kenya, marathon running, Magical Kenya has never sponsored Nairobi Marathon. That's sponsored by Standard Chartered. Marathon running is one thing where Kenyans will excel. The route of the marathon will, if, if you look at even London Marathon, it goes by all the, all the historical landmarks, etc. That would be a way to market Kenya. But the, the, the struggle with elitism, the, the, the worship of elitism, and, and the imagination and elitism, that... Elitism in our minds is white and colonial. Yes, yes, why it's what it's it, in the tourism industry, it, it is whiteness. That's why I've, I've been in the board of a tourism parastatal. All tourism data in Kenya is tagged to this strange thing called arrivals, it's taken at the airport. So, that huge exodus of let's say Luo's going to Dala in December does not appear on any tourism radar. That huge exodus of what Wabara going to the coast in December does not, we don't capture that data because they don't pass through immigration. They don't count. That's why to boost arrivals, we've even mooted ideas like waiving visa fees. And I've been at meetings where this was discussed and, and I asked myself, if someone cannot afford to spend $50 why do we want him more high in Kenya? Actually, what, what, what are, just... how are they helping us? Hmm? Mm. That's 5K. If they can't spend 5K in Kenya, then thank you, but uh, go somewhere else. But then, you That's... know, there's an irony there because they want to waive this $50 and yet they're not marketing to choose string tourists. Yeah. They're marketing yeah. to their high end. Even the hotels where they expect these tourists to go, the, yeah. the charge is a thousand dollars a night. Yeah. There are such yeah. hotels in Kenya. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yes. So why are you? Yet you don't want him 50? to pay fifty. Yet, yet the one thousand he's paying, it's paid into an account that is not even in Kenya. So the fifty dollars is the one thing we are actually guaranteed that he will spend in Kenya. <laughs> That fifty dollars, we know it is here. It stays here, and it goes to Kenya government. A lot of these places, payments are made into accounts that are not even here. Actually, a tourist, a tourist this? can come, a tourist can come to this country Without and do a, ten, a twenty thousand dollar safaris, and none of that money actually comes into this country. So the ones who are the ones who are the bedrock of our tourism industry, those who will be here making use of these facilities this, despite global pandemic uh, or terrorism or anything, are us, the Kenyans. We will always go to Shags, we will always go to Zamburu to see elephant, we'll always go to the coast, we'll go to visit our friends. We'll go to, when it gets to December, Luo's Luyas will have to go to Western. Luyas will go to Nyanza. This is, this is like a pilgrimage. But our data captures none of that. It's like that money doesn't 
it it doesn't we we don't we don't we don't uh, fall on the radar we those are all under the radar so when we say tourists are down tourist numbers are up it's because arrivals are up arrivals are down arrivals by definition foreigners Aki, what do we need to do? What, where is the, I'm not understanding. I know we've talked about it, but I'm still not getting what the problem is. You're saying like that, yeah. but isn't that what we vote on? We're always being told you're this tribe, you're the other tribe. It, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense because we will discriminate but, against mm. one another. But then next time we are told vaccines are going to foreigners, it does. How? How does that happen? Mm. The identity we have is 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 uh, we identify ourselves as tools, mm. like like the, the tribal thing you're talking about. Mm. Whose tool are you? Mm. Depending on what tribal you are, so and so you are so and so. But as tools, we don't we shouldn't be we do we are not deserving of respect or recognition. It's no, not it's an not, ethnicity yeah. identity. It's a no instrumentally it's a utility utilitarian yes. sort of thing yeah it's a utilitarian sort of thing and those are tools tools to be used in the service of whiteness this 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 whiteness is it extends it's not necessarily physical but it includes that so now now the whiteness so when you want to talk about a tourist that is the tourist the one the arrival the one who might be white or or Asian or whatever, but not from here. And then the one carrying foreign exchange. I mean, obviously, when I go to Dollars. Western Kenya, I pay for mm -hmm. my petrol in shillings, or if I stay in a hotel, I pay in shillings. Yeah, the one who carries foreign exchange, that's the one who matters. But you know, Even, I think, I yeah. think the, the issue is when you pay your, your Kenya shillings to somebody in Western, that money yeah. is not is not going to help a civil top civil servant take their kids to Oxford or something. Yes, that's yes, why. yes. That that yeah yeah that that that's 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 the problem. It doesn't contribute to Oguna's salary, mm. and 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 that's that that that's that's why they don't care about that. You didn't arrive. We don't know where you went. We don't care where you went. And and uh, and you are you are not someone who will go back to another country and tell tell others how you had a wonderful time, wonderful time in Kenya. <laughs> yes, our identity is Kenya. In tourism, our identity is not Kenya; it's Kenya. And that and Kenya is a very very heavily loaded name. And that now ties to all that we have talked about, about work, about mm. COVID, the way vaccines are going to people other than us, about, you know, the academics and their, their opinion of Kenyans, the way they talk about Kenyans. Has it always yeah, been like think, this think, or it's just this, this age we are in? Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's pretty much the age we are in. Mm. It's pretty much the age we are in. The and and if I if I use the prism of academics, um, academics these days, I'm professor so and so. You could you could work with him or her for a long time, especially those in the civil service, um, for a long time and spend a lot of time together. There'll be no time where anything will betray what it is that he or she has a PhD in. You'll never know if it was physics or literature or biology, because there is nothing they ever speak that refers to their supposed learning. And that's 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 the tragedy, because all they have to show is contempt. That's a professor. So a professor is not known by always giving expert advice. A professor is known by the contempt he or she shows to others. You remember Professor Margaret Kobia. She was telling young people should not be looking for jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They should be creating jobs. And here she is, a professor out of the academy, still working in applying and working in a job in government. And she's probably worked for 30 years or whatever or more, not 40 years. And she's telling young people don't be looking for jobs. 
advising people not to look for jobs. This strange thing that we keep hearing, invest. I thought investment meant you have money. That's what you invest. What is what is there to invest other than money? Where do where do people get this money? Invest. Some are told save. Some are given tax holidays. People who are not working, you are on a tax holiday already. You are not working, you're earning nothing. So obviously you are paying no tax. So how can you be happy when someone gives unemployed people tax holidays? We just heard that the youth fund, the auditor general said that the youth fund has not given out loans because all the 1 billion which they were given has been spent on allowances and salaries. Young people are finding out, they're questioning, they're questioning, they're questioning, and they're finding out where the lies are. And some people, and I said, a lot of young people will be sort of tolerating this hatred and contempt because they say, ah, God, yeah, election is coming. Will make my voice hard. Then someone tells him that I there's been no election. Hey, <laughs> that's very that one won't fly. Hmm? That one oh. won't fly. I hope I hope I hope Man Manora has found out it won't fly. What? What? What do we need to do? What's I think the urgent work that needs to be done i think one one thing one thing one thing we need to do is that um what i can loosely call could you take a male self-reliance and this is an example of it um I, I i play hockey kenya hockey union right now is is behaving the way kenya government is behaving imposing rules and not organizing hockey to be played despite the fact that so many other sports have started again people have started organizing their own hockey tournaments and playing mm. um yeah, people need to come together with the agricultural producers get, get come together form your markets trade your goods um don't don't wait don't wait for external inputs that may or may never come if they come let them find us let them find us already doing our own thing. Um, we need to whatever you whatever you can do, market yourself. If you, if you if your neighbor needs something, if you can provide it, get get it and sell it to him and get, have him buy it from you. Um, just like dairy producers, my I buy milk from a neighbor. I buy milk from a neighbor, so th that's that's of thing I, I try and I try and do buy buy vegetable meat from the nearest butchery and that kind of thing so we must we must we must stop producing for someone else mm. if someone comes and tells you you need to start producing cotton to supply cotton here in Nyanza or here in Nyeri to supply a factory somewhere you don't know think twice about that mm. think twice mm. about that as I told my my neighbor here, there's a project that came here telling people to to change from growing maize to start growing popcorn. Popcorn. The maize type of pop, popcorn, because there's 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 someone who needs to buy it. No, that's that's good. That, that that's a tough sell. Grow maize which you can sell to your neighbor. So I think self reliance, whether it's in arts, services, and all that, we need to start start offering it to the nearest person, mm. and and have Almost, almost like devolve the economy. If, mm. if I can, mm. yeah, yeah, it's like devolve the economy. Don't let our mainstream news outlets have a monopoly on what we know. Mm. Let's read more, share information, um, sh share information, share knowledge, and sh and share it freely so that people know. People know when whatever decision he makes, he makes from a point of knowledge. So I think th th those are the important mm. things, and we we mm. have to start. We have to start ignoring the hatred. We should we should just we we, we should just not give them a platform to, to 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 hate us. Should avoid these political rallies. That's where the hatred happens. It's put right in front of us, and it's spewing in our faces and and we are expected to applaud it because these are the these are the people who hold the baskets in which we sit. Just jump out of those baskets and 
find find our way because right right now they they're not providing any guidance and question academics god we have to question we have to we have to question mm. yeah mm. we have to question academics relentlessly and deconstruct the 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 nonsense they're telling us behind the behind the credentials and titles because right now right now what i saw from the report on parliament yesterday is nothing short of an intellectual crisis when when uh, when a legal document is being discussed and a member of the committee who is an mp and a lawyer is saying i'm disowning that thing it's 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 bizarre who, who represents who represents us then if they can't if they can't handle such such basic functions so i think yeah we need to become a lot more a lot more self reliant demand if someone does if if there's a leader who does something for you or something you benefit from well and good but if he doesn't ignore him or her ignore him or her you, i mean you, you see leaders neglecting the, the very things they're talking about right now there's been a lot of talk about sexual violence um oh, yeah, especially we recent horrible vi victims i have not had any of our, our women rep talks about reps talk about it I've, I've not. I mean, I'm. I'm. I consume a lot of media. I've not seen any of our women representatives talk about it in parliament or anywhere. And I what haven't. is this thing we have of excusing violence? It's a. Gosh. It's 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 a slavery mentality. I think. Yeah. A slavery mentality. The slavery mentality. I think, and obviously, obviously, I don't know how how the functions of how slavery worked, but I think, I think there is a relief, some ridiculous release, perverse relief when someone else is hurt, perverse relief that is not me. Someone else is being whipped to death, but it's not me. So I'm like a spectator of sorts. It's it's a it's a very strange, perverse, um, perverse relief and almost satisfaction that it's not you. Every time you have news about some sexual assault and that kind of thing, I go through this same trauma with dealing with people I thought I knew. Suddenly, not taking the position I I expect them to take on this. And I'm over there on social media. I'm blocking people. I'm getting angry and stuff. And it happens every time. So I don't know what is wrong with us. But Someone you know, wants it's to a tell pattern. you that. Yes. When you think yes. even 2017, the violence, there were people yes. who were excusing yes. it. People made fun of the death of Sando. Hmm? So there is, we, we, we have, I think we are traumatized to a, to a level that we've 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 lost our moral compass, mm. and we've we've lost we've lost that I identity because there are things of there are things of identity. Um, it's not it's it's things like violence. It's your 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 reaction to violence is an identity. My identity is that I'm against that kind of violence. Mm. It's not I, I'm against this one, but I'm for this one or this one. I don't, it's not a case by case basis. It's not a case by case basis. I'm against this kind of violence or violation of rights, but um, people don't have an identity. They want to know, oh, there was, was, there was a rape and assault. Who did, who did it? Was he rich or was it a poor man? There was recently that some peasant farmer from somewhere, I think Nyauru, was it the case he, he had defied, his, he was jailed for, a total of maybe a hundred and something years. I mm. mean, they threw the book at him as they should have. Mm. And people cheered that. Mm. But what about this other one now? It's money. And, the, and you say the defense of power, the relentless mm. defense of power. We have to defend power. You don't care about your own mother, but you'll go to the streets because some you had someone's mother was uh, insulted. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Your mother doesn't even have sugar for her, would you call in shags? Hmm? 
but you'll hit the streets because someone's mother was insulted or perceived to be have been insulted and this kind of thing so i mean the defense of power is it's 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 a dangerous dangerous thing and i think very, this is the sort of very. this is the sort of thing that produced mm. these excesses in history and genocides these things mm. that were happened some even before we were born it's because there were there was a whole group of people defending power and never questioning it Wow, on that sad note but it's also hopeful because we have named the problem yeah. Thank you so much for this conversation. Yeah. We are, yeah, as I said, we face some we face some interesting times ahead, but uh, we still hold we still hold hope that people will wake up. Mm. And I, as I always say, there's only two people you need to, you, two types of people you need to be able to recognize: the ones who are telling you the truth and the ones who are telling you nonsense. And the more Kenyans come to recognize that, we I think we'll be okay in spite of everything.